I had some spare time this weekend, so went ahead and assembled this $2.40 4-bit DIY electronic digital clock, which I bought from AliExpress a while ago. I bought this DIY kit from Hisai 3C Electronic Components store from AliExpress for just $2.40. I have provided the store's link in the description below. The packaging was good and the item was delivered to me in just 15 days. The item came with a circuit diagram and a list of components included in the packaging. Including the instruction sheet, there are 18 items in this packet. You can find a scanned copy of the circuit diagram in the description below. Frankly speaking, by looking at the components, it doesn't look like you really need to be an electronic genius to assemble all these components. I guess all you need is just a general purpose soldering kit and a bit of your spare time. The board is actually drawn out with all the shapes of the components on it. So even if you don't know what the components are, it's really easy to find the right place for it. I'm going to install the components from the top to the bottom so that I have easy access to all of them while soldering. Let's first solder the 1K PR1 resistor pack to the board. One end of the resistor pack has a white dot on it. The white dotted side sits on the square facing the left side of the clock. After that, I'm soldering the 8550 PNP transistor to the board. Just match the D of the transistor to the D drawn on the board and you'll never get it wrong. Next, I'm soldering the 10 microfarad capacitor. The positive terminal or the long leg of the capacitor slides into the hole that has a plus next to it. It actually doesn't matter what order you are sorting the components on the board. The reason I'm sorting them from top to bottom is to have easy access to the components when I'm putting them on the board. After soldering the base of the IC, I'm soldering the two 10K resistors and the three ceramic capacitors to the board. This clock also comes with two different alarm settings. You can either set them up or turn them off if you don't need them. This clock only displays in the 24 hours clock format. I don't know about you, but I really like the 24 hours format, so it's actually a good thing for me. Next I'm soldering the 12 MHz oscillator crystal and the buzzer to the board. The positive leg of the buzzer slides into the hole which has a plus mark on it. After that, I'm soldering the two push buttons and the screw terminal block. I really don't like the concept of having the buttons in the front, so I'll later move them to the back of the unit. The supply voltage can be between 3 volts to 6 volts. Okay. Now the final bit. Let's solder the 4-bit 7-segment display and install the AT89C2051IC to the socket. Make sure when you solder the 7-segment, the dot on the bottom right corner matches the dot on the board. These displays consume a hell lot of current. So, before creating the enclosure, I'll do a bit of a math to estimate how long the clock will last on a fully charged battery. Once everything is soldered, it's time for us to do a quick test. Looks like everything is working the way they should. So let's now do the math and find out how many hours this clock will last without recharging the battery. To calculate the current, we need to set up our multimeter to the current calculation mode. Then connect the multimeter in series with the clock to the battery. The 18650 battery I have holds 1500 mA current. And by looking at the multimeter, it looks like the clock consumes almost 25 mA current. So if we divide 1500 by 25, we get 60 hours which is like 2.5 days. I have noticed that when you recharge the battery after it goes completely flat, the clock displays all sort of funny things except for the time on the display. So adding a reset button to the clock would be a good idea. Went back to the clock's manual and looked into the circuit diagram. Looking into the circuit, you can see that the pin number one of the IC is the reset pin. Digging a bit further, you can easily figure out that to reset the IC, you just need to set the pin to high. So that's it, bingo. Let's do a quick test and see if I have hit the jackpot or not. Oh yes, that bloody works. Cool, now let's go ahead and create the wooden enclosure for this clock. While cleaning my storeroom, I looked at the pile of scrap wood I have in there. I was shocked to see the amount of crap I have collected over time. It's like my scrap pile explodes every time I build a new project. 
Bigger the project, the bigger the pile of scrap wood. So I used a bit of it to create a nice looking enclosure for this clock. I also added few upgrades to this small project which I'm going to show you in the video. As discussed earlier, I'm moving the push buttons from the front to the back of the unit. I'm also adding a reset button along with the other two buttons to the back panel. I chose plywood to create the back panel as it has less thickness than a pallet wood. Using the thinnest drill bit, I'm drilling all the holes required for the three push buttons. After that, I'm soldering a six-way ribbon cable to the push buttons. It was actually a bit of a challenge to solder the ribbon to the buttons. So, to hold the cables tight, I'm adding a bit of hot glue to it. Next I'm going to install the TP4056 battery charging module with the protection IC to the unit. The protection IC protects the 18650 battery from overcharging and over discharging. If you want to know more about the module, please check out my tutorial number 2, DIY solar battery charger. After drilling the right size hole in the back plate, I'm going to hot glue the module into it. I become a bit lazy and instead of using nails or screws to stick the back plate, I just hot glued it to the back of the unit. After that, I plugged in the wireless charging receiver to the TP4056 charging module, which I also bought from AliExpress for $3. If you don't want to use a wireless charger, you can either use a step down converter or a micro USB charger. Once the back plate is in place, I'm soldering the push buttons to the clock. The reset button connects to the positive and pin number one of the microcontroller. The other two push buttons will just replace the ones in the front. Now let's connect the battery and the charging module to the clock. Connect the out plus and out minus of the TP4056 module to the positive and negative input port of the clock. Next I'm installing the 37 volt 18650 battery using hot glue inside the wooden enclosure. Once fitted, I'm connecting the B plus and B minus ports of the TP4056 module to the positive and negative end of the battery. That's it, we are almost done. To finish up the project, I'm going to stick the 7 segment display to the face plate and then hot glue it to the front side of the wooden enclosure. Using the S1 and S2 button, you can program this clock. In my project, I'm calling them B1 and B2. Hold the B1 to enter the clock settings mode. Then A is to set the hour. B is to set the minutes. C is to set the chimes on or off. D is to set the first alarm on or off. E is to set the first alarm's hour. And F is to set the first alarm's minute. Then G is to set the second alarm on or off. And H and I for the hour and minutes of the second alarm. When the alarm starts beeping, you need to press the B2 button to turn it off. There is no option to put this clock on snooze. However, as this clock has two alarms, you can set them at an interval of 10 or 5 minutes to sort of mock the snooze option. This clock is really very nice and accurate. Great for all the DIY lovers and for those who like electronics. I really enjoyed building it. In the night, I charge my phone with the wireless charger and in the daytime, the clock sits over it. Wireless charging gives this clock 100% mobility. I can take it with me to the shower, when I'm having food or even when I go out for picnic. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.